Yeah. So today we will finish wrap up this course and um, setup is very different than usual because I want to present first how this application is going to work and then explain how I made it work. Uh, and it's very likely not what you expect, not what any one of us expected, uh, but it does work surprisingly pretty well the the way I did it just yesterday. So uh, without further ado, this is now the final version of the application. Uh, I will most likely um, fine tune it a little bit and uh, I'm but later after the course. Um, and it's actually not much different from yesterday. I only added a very little change, very little change into the code, but I got it to work uh, using a hardware modification, and that is this glove. So the solution is not, um, I couldn't get it to work only using software, no matter how much I tried. Uh, and I tried many things. I will present some, some slides later, but I did get it to work quite reliably uh, using this glove. And this glove is not a normal... Uh, stream pros. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's just audio comes through. Okay. Uh, so should I maybe try resharing? No, it works. Okay. No, we'll work. Okay. Yeah, great. Well, let's see what happens. But anyway, um, so I was actually showing that this glove is not a normal glove by any standards. It's something that I made. Um, I actually recorded when I made it. Uh, <laughs> it's made from this um, yogurt box, plastic box. You can make it also out of paper, I think, but um, yeah, it needs to have some kind of bright color on one side. And I also used some other things here. Uh, basically, what this glove is, is um, if you can see now the screen there, uh, it has a sponge, it has a dishwashing sponge here, and this is that part of the of the yogurt lid uh, that actually is tied to a string on the sponge. So as I press uh, on this um, table here, the sponge is being pressed and this yogurt lid is raising up because it has a little bit of uh, elasticity there. It's kind of like a spring. Um, yeah, very likely not what I thought this will be like in the beginning, but this uh, achieves very many different things that make this uh, application work reasonably well. First of all, um, I, as a user, uh, am able to see the screen from above. So here I'm seeing my hands from uh, above in the same way that I would see my hands if I look at them here. So somehow this upwards position is, um, is easy for me to, uh, in my mind, understand that, okay, as I'm moving my hand and I'm looking at the screen and I see it moving there, that is actually my hand and that is um, a natural way to, to see the movement. Second thing is that I actually feel some buttons or keys being pressed as I am pressing these, uh, these sponges here. I can't really explain to you how this is affecting mentally, but um, it is very different than just having a normal hand next to it and uh, uh, touching this, uh, this table. So pressing a button or just touching something has a little bit different kind of uh, feeling to it. 
And third, as you can probably see, a color is being revealed there only at the fingertips and only when I am touching something. So I did try a bunch of ways to detect this kind of hand position and uh, if I am touching something or not. It was really, really difficult to do because uh, if I ask you now, am I touching the table or not? And with which fingers? You as a human probably can't tell that these two fingers are actually touching the surface. So uh, the difference from this to this um, is very hard to notice, even if you have a trained, uh, trained eye looking for it. So um, it's not a good angle to shoot from and expect that um, you can also detect this. Machine learning, no machine learning, just human watching. It's, it's just a bad angle to detect if you're touching something or not. Now this sun actually that is bothering me from the, from the window um, is kind of helping to detect if I'm touching something or not. But if the sun would go away and you wouldn't see my, my shadows forming, it would be even more difficult than, than what it is. Okay, so this was a small introduction to how I got it to work. Now, let's see how it works. So first, I need to click this background uh, button here where it says no background detected. And now um, I added it here a little bit of extra information. So this is something that I added from yesterday, but it has been studied by us in lectures seven and eight. Uh, this is uh basically uh trying to look here on the left side of the screen now for this color which is the same color as the yogurt lid as seen from the camera and the difference here in the hit test and the code that we wrote yesterday is that um if we have just a difference in the image like what we see here uh then the buttons are not going to be pressed but the hover state is going to be triggered and the button is only pressed um if this blue color is um color key is detected uh over the button in this hit test uh, of the canvas now you can see that I don't really have a great controlled environment here and some stuff is happening there. And this is now because of this annoying uh, sun situation. Uh, the sun is actually moving faster than you think. And this light here is, yeah, the, the reason why you see this line forming here is because the sun is moving. So this is going to be relatively difficult difficult to to test i will need to click this background here um, from time to time but uh, i can't do any better it's uh, it's my living room it's not the lab setting or yeah i i should have thought about it but i didn't think it's that that problematic but yeah uh so let's let's see can i try to play something and maybe you guess what it is Okay, I forgot how it goes. <laughs> Any guesses? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it was beautiful and jingle bells, I guess too. Okay. Honestly, I never played the piano in my life. 
yesterday was the first time ever when I tried this thing. Uh, and I learned these just by watching boring tutorials. So I think that some guys that are better at piano could do better, uh, better than me. Um, it's, it's okay. So I, of course, I know how to type a keyboard really well. And uh, that maybe hel helps, uh, helps a little bit. Uh, notice here, false positives can happen like this if you somehow see the the blue parts um, in some kind of angles like this but otherwise if your hand is in this position and even if you try to bend it like this the way I, I built this system um, with this kind of springiness uh, so yeah let's see I basically cut this sponge into small small parts here then uh, I cut the blue parts from there and uh, I made these kind of triangle like like shapes and then I tied these on these uh, sponges to do something like like this so in the last stage uh, I'm actually hiding this um, this tip of that triangle um, by making it go inside the glove. So um, making a, a hole in the glove there and the triangle tip goes in. So when the sponge is uh, extended, this white part here covers the blue area um perfectly so even if i try to bend my fingers like this i'm not gonna get false positives the only time when i'm gonna reveal when i'm gonna reveal this color is indeed if i press the key um yeah and actually i think when i played now the song i didn't make any false positives but i did make some mistakes <laughs> because I, I just don't know how to play really well. So, uh, yeah, now I'm going to play this other song from yesterday just to see a little bit more variation. I sent it already to you on the chat, but um, let's see. Uh, how did it go? And I learned a little bit more. Um, okay, I messed up, but uh, some. something like that uh yeah so it's relatively reliable uh it's not the same as pressing a real piano because i'm not looking at my hands so i i need to learn a little bit um how to look at the screen and um uh, think that they are my hands but this is something that, again, I am relatively familiar with. I used to use drawing tablets quite much in the past. And even the mouse is something that it is doing that all the time. I'm moving the mouse cursor. Uh, I'm expecting the mouse to move to the left, but actually my real movement is, is here. And it is something that we have been trained to do uh, ever since Windows became a thing. So I'm not sure if you know, but uh, when Windows, uh, I don't remember which, maybe 95 or 98 came out, they purposely uh, added games into it so that people learn how to use the mouse. 
simple games like uh, like Solitaire or or something. Yeah, I think Solitaire was there for people to learn how to click the mouse, how to uh, be able to hover a location, how to click, how to hold, and how to drag it into a different place. This is something that didn't exist before that. And I know it's kind of hard to imagine it maybe because you're you're younger, but uh, people didn't know how to use a mouse. They needed it to learn and they learned it in this fun way that was their their strategy basically and then of course right click was also a thing i think that maybe minesweeper was made for for introducing also right click in a fun way uh if i remember right in minesweeper you check something with with the right click but uh, yeah anyway a little bit storytelling here and um um yeah, I'm relatively happy with this. I'm not extremely happy because uh, I would have liked this to work um, without this thing. But uh, let me try to tell you what other stuff I tried and what failed <laughs> and why it failed. And hopefully you believe me when I say that it just didn't work. <laughs> So, um, let's see, I think you can't see at the moment my, okay, can you see this uh, PowerPoint slide now, the white slide basically, and other things I considered this text should be uh, there. Yes, yes. We can see. Okay, let me try to make this um, this webcam better. It's kind of blocking this screen here. All right. So <clears throat> other things I considered, and this was my initial vision um, to do a simple hand pose detection and to um, figure out what is pressed based on this pose of the hand. And the way I wanted to implement this, and I actually did, I, I tried it, um, was I first clustered these locations, these black locations, to get some kind of representatives, those red, uh, green uh, circles there. Then what I did on top of that was actually I computed the minimum spanning trees for those. Um, if you don't know what these things are, then I think DAA course, this design and analysis of algorithms or clustering course, we, we have such things in the department. So you may want to, to check these. And um, I actually taught clustering in this course a little bit last year, but this year I didn't uh, because I ended up not needing it. So this method failed because what I said previously, it could learn that, okay, I have some kind of um, uh, fingers down and others are not, and it could learn that very well but it couldn't detect that I am indeed touching the surface or not. So because the surface it was very close uh, when my fingers are up and when they are down, this top view wasn't enough. It just didn't, didn't work. It was making a bunch of false positives and I couldn't, pay, I couldn't play anything. It just didn't work. So what I did is I... Uh, did the centroids, I computed minimum spanning trees, and then I actually took the branching factor. So uh, basically how many times, um, how many links come from a single node. And I used the branching factor of these nodes um, as a long feature vector. So this is high dimensional uh, data here. And it really worked. So if I would do something like this, or if I would do something like this, um, they would be distinguishable. 
but if I would do this and then move my hand just one centimeter down to touch the table, it looks the same. It just didn't, didn't work. This was the dream what I had that maybe it's possible to do this. Then a different camera position, uh, basically putting the camera in front of me so that you get this kind of movement. Uh, and then the keys would be below the hand. There's nothing wrong with this. This works actually great, especially if you add some kind of markers to the fingertips. Um, this actually, uh, and maybe some people have nails that are different color or painted or something, and then you don't even need to put markers there. Um, this works great. The problem is uh, I tried using it and I got a headache. So after about an hour of, of playing around with this and uh, trying to make music come as I'm learning it from YouTube tutorials, um, I couldn't play the song. My head started to hurt because I wasn't used to see my hand from that angle uh, on the screen when I'm trying to aim at the keys. It's a very, very unnatural position um, compared to this one. I don't know if this would improve in time, but I did give it about an hour and I just, it didn't click at all. I couldn't play um, any song really, not even simple simple simpler things than what i tried today uh i also considered other stuff i didn't try it but uh, basically i thought that this could be i could have a circuit system here that um when i touch something light comes up idea for this came because um uh, as i am touching now something and i'm and this thing is lifting up a little bit, um, revealing this blue color. Um, this is a mechanical movement and it is going to be slower than the speed of light. So, which is electricity and this light bulb there. So I thought that this could work and probably it works, but I didn't have the necessary equipment to make it. Um, I thought that I would cover the light actually in a, some kind of plastic um, material with a very dark color, like maybe dark green, for example. And then when the light comes on, it brightens that color. So essentially the same system we have now, but the hardware is different. Um, it could allow you to tap the keys faster because now it does take some time for pressing this and lifting that but if it's just touching uh, with a small button button at the bottom then it could be a faster response time i i don't know um, just what came to my mind uh, and actually this started off as as <laughs> trying off some origami uh, models uh, nothing that looks that fancy. This is just some Google image, but uh, I took it because it has this uh, inside color here and you probably get a point. Uh, these were actually at first something like that. Um, that would, uh, again, using some, a sponge here, uh, opening and closing this kind of shape. But then I realized, okay, I'm not gonna make 10 of these. Uh, thanks because the lesson is tomorrow <laughs> and uh, I came up with this uh, with this simpler simpler system I also considered balloons I have no idea what I was going with that but yeah anyway um, this is so you kind of see what what uh, went on behind the scenes and uh, I think I would like to hear what you have to say about all this stuff. Like, do you think it's cheating? 
that uh, I couldn't do a fully software solution and I had to figure out some hardware hardware tricks. What do you think? I actually think everybody should open up their uh, microphone and we should clap for you. I don't. This, this is amazing. I, I, I don't know if I deserve clapping, but uh, uh, I did want to get this to work, uh, one way or another. So. Oh, um, I think it's more than enough. It's really <laughs> great, in my opinion, I guess. Yeah, well, this is this is very great. It reminds me of some MacGyverish solution. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly. That's cool. Yeah, well, uh, sometimes you have to do it. And I I really don't know. Um, I actually Googled a little bit and I haven't seen such a thing before. Uh, there are, of course, um, touch screens or touch tables that you can actually use to make such a system. Um, but this has benefits. Uh, for example, feeling that you are pressing something uh, in addition to uh, in addition to just touching the surface has some kind of benefits. Uh, you don't need to buy an expensive table or make make some kind of resistive some some kind of table that is able to sense where you are touching, basically like a touch screen but without the screen. Um, I think that this ended up something nice and something that isn't really out there, like a, a new new idea. And um, it does work to some extent. And I have many ideas what to do with this in the future. I'm I'm gonna make it into a piano teaching tool. I basically I'm gonna code some music there and then I'm gonna make those kind of things from the top that are coming on your keys and um, you basically need to press where it says that you need to press and I'm gonna make it like a game basically scoring it maybe adding some visual effects when when pressing these these keys there um, this is not just for a piano this can be for anything you could layer a keyboard there you could layer a game controller there. You could, I don't know, uh, if you have a lever that you need to move up and down, you could code that there. So I'm thinking that I want to refactor this code and uh, make it so that you just call it as a black box and um, you can give it the buttons that you want to work with uh basically but it should generalize well so i don't know if i have time for it but uh, definitely this is one thing that i want to do in the future and um, i also want to support the variant from yesterday where i don't have the glove so that people can just do this uh, uh, moving the finger over the button and it will press because uh who makes this? Like, it, it took me about an, an hour to make it and... Uh, you have to start a factory for the gloves. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm sure that if, if some big company would do this and advertise it properly, then uh, if they sell gloves with the product, then they could easily charge at least like 50 euros or something for them, even though they costed nothing so they they could gain gain for this and definitely if xbox or playstation or, or these guys would um would market it somehow and make the gloves really look professional and not like this crappy uh, <laughs> stuff uh like they would look fancy or maybe yeah or i i don't know i think that it would it would um become popular but yeah and actually it's not easy to decide on these first i had this sponge um which would be great because 
this green color is actually relatively close to the blue color that I'm using uh, under this. And I thought that, okay, maybe it's going to be problematic. It wasn't. You, you saw that it worked. Um, but if the glove and this fabric would be the same color, then uh, uh, even less to worry about. Problem is, uh, <laughs> when I made these, I couldn't press them. <laughs> So, pressing these, like that, is much harder than pressing these. These are easier to press, but they are strong enough to get this, uh, this thing up when, I mean, to keep this thing down. And pressing on this is just really, really difficult. Your finger actually starts to hurt. So, I had this other sponge that was great. Uh, looking and really fitting and maybe this wouldn't look so weird um, but difficult to press especially with uh, the pinky or yeah or maybe this finger also and I just threw these away <laughs> it was a bad idea even though it, it looked nice so there are many things that you would need to consider when building these uh, professionally or maybe selling these yeah but anyway i sure had fun uh coming up with these kind of um, solutions and i am a bit sad about this one failing so i ended up not teaching you at all almost about machine learning we just learned a little bit about uh, about feature vectors about different spaces, multi-dimensional spaces. We did do a little bit of clustering, but I didn't teach you any clustering algorithm. Uh, I only showed you how to detect the cluster that has the blue color as the representative. Um, so basically almost not at all machine learning, and I wanted to have a little bit of that as well. Um, but when I saw that this is just not good enough, I tried this hand pose sometimes in the middle of the course and uh, I had time to think that, okay, uh, I need some better solution if I want this to work reliably. It would have been nice to show you these, these things, but um, uh, I think that you already have some idea how they work from the exercise tasks and those other videos that I pointed out. So if you ever need to do something like this, at least you maybe have some kind of starting point. So thanks. Radu? Yeah. I have a question, sorry. I was, to be honest, I was not here when you explained, but uh, can you explain again uh, how was the touching end uh, work? Like when you touch the table, Detect. Yeah, so, okay, I will explain once more because maybe some of you came late. So um, I just give a brief, another brief demo here. So um, this camera here above is filming now my, my hand and then this other hand is here, which has this really weird looking uh, glove with um, uh, sponges on the bottom but when you press on the sponge uh, it something lifts up here on the top and uh, this is some plastic from a yogurt yogurt container and um, yeah that's it because when you press on the table uh, this thing reveals a different color underneath and basically, the system works as previously, uh, as yesterday, so that uh, instead of detecting the taps when the changes in the image occur uh, and making the noise appear, I'm just detecting the hovering for the buttons. And then as you are pressing something, using the color, um, using the color key from from here, which is the same color as the as the yogurt boxes, I can make 
any kind of noise like this up here. So basically I'm detecting the touch using this cheating hardware solution instead of the software because I found it to be really uh, reliable compared to anything, anything else. So that's it pretty much. And you can ask me more, more stuff now if you, if you want. Uh, it's kind of your last chance because it's the last lecture. Um, but if not, then I will start to talk a little bit about the changes in the code. So I won't be coding today. Uh, I will just show you what I did to change this from, from yesterday and explain the code um, because I'm a bit tired and I think it's going to go uh, poorly. And the changes are really, really small. So only here in the hit test canvas, I am detecting also these um, other things. So black means just hover is triggered. And this red now coming from the color key means that the, that the down is, is triggered. So to me, uh, yeah. And false positives almost never happen. Like you can do this kind of movement, but they do happen if I if I reveal this blue color in some um, other way. Like you can see it a little bit here uh, underneath the, the components when I'm turning my hand uh, upside down. But um, yeah, usually. So this is really really uh, reliable. It's the best that I could come up with that actually allows me to play some song uh, without false positives and all the mistakes that I make, I make because I'm a lousy piano player. <laughs> so this is now for those that came late and watch the video because I did demonstrate my amazing uh, ability to play real songs in the beginning of this uh, of this lecture. So I hope that answered. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, um, I just want to ask um, um, if we want to do it without the gloves, um, um, you know, I I know you tried it, but uh, is there any suggestions that you might suggest of how what to look for if we want to do that? Well, the most promising thing that I found without the gloves is this thing, this position. So changing the camera angle to film from the front and then um, considering the tips of the, of the fingers. Um, this could be done depending on your camera angle and your hand position. It could be done even without color, basically just checking again the difference from the background here. Um, or you could use some kind of markers on the hands, but that's very easy compared to making these gloves that are like horrible to build. I mean, it, it took me an hour and I was showing today in the beginning that uh, this, is, this was the process. So um, basically cutting the sponge, then cutting this into some kind of shapes like that, and uh, then tying those things on the, um, on the sponge to make many of those things. <laughs> and and um, actually, very bad thing about these gloves that I still don't like very much is I can't easily... Uh, oh, okay, sorry, I was demonstrating something and you were not not seeing what I'm talking about. Yeah, sorry. So just quick uh, reintroduction. So these were the materials and uh, uh, basically I had to 
cut this punch into different parts, then make some kind of parts like that, white on one side, blue on another, and uh, make a bunch of these things to go on every every finger. And uh, yeah, and at the end, I was masking that tip of the triangle inside inside the glove so that the glove is kind of covering that. So it was kind of like the easy way I could think about doing it. Um, the tip of the triangle is important because if you just cut that thing closer, it will tip over because of uh, how, how the string is, is being pulled. So let me try to find here. Okay, so here you can probably get an idea. If you cut this here, then this force here is gonna pull everything like that. So I needed it to go a little bit longer and uh, be somehow supporting it here in the, in the center to prevent tipping over. And this triangle shape was easiest to cut and fastest to, to make, so... Yeah, anyway, so one thing that I was talking about previously is that um, what I hate about these gloves... Uh, don't get me wrong, I, I kind of like the solution. I, I It is reliable and it does feel like I'm pressing something here. Uh, if you make it work without the gloves somehow, you will lose some of the good things that the gloves are bringing. Of course, it also brings some bad things like complication to make it and maybe sometimes this plastic thing wears off and it doesn't spring back anymore. I, I don't know what will happen. I expect that surprises may come. But the bad thing about it is I can't put my other glove on <laughs> because this glove has these sponges here. I just, I can't put the second glove on and adjust it properly. Um, at least not in this live demo here. Because I need to use the mouse also and click some other things. I don't recommend using the mouse with this. It's like it's like using punching gloves or boxing gloves or something like that. So <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what to recommend. I think and you don't have to quote me on this, but I do uh, work in the machine learning group, so I, I do know some things about machine learning. Um, I don't think it's possible to make this without hardware help so that it works reliably. Just because... Um, let me see. Just because of what I mentioned previously. So. When your hand is like this, uh, it's very hard to know which fingers are touching the ground. So now only two fingers are touching the ground. Can you tell which fingers are touching the ground? I'm going to change the fingers to one finger. You could tell maybe okay, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you can tell that it's the middle. Okay, can you tell... Number one and three, number one and four. Okay, great. Can you tell now which is? First finger, like the index. N none of the fingers. No, the thumb, I guess. I don't know. None, none of the fingers are touching. <laughs> so, so, that so that's the problem, because from the top angle, you as a human, can't even uh, can't even detect these precisely. And when you're gonna do this processing and your fingers are gonna do something like this, uh, unless you're gonna use a system that uh, really makes these things appear when you want them to, like make the detection proper, you're gonna have a bunch of random noise there, false positives appearing all the time. Even if your precision is going somehow magically to be like 98% or something. If a wrong note comes when you don't want it to come, it's going to ruin the whole song. So 
I needed something that I can really rely on. Uh, I, I, you may not, not trust me here, but I do encourage you, you trying, trying to make this better. And uh, do use libraries. Uh, I did try to use a bit of TensorFlow when I became desperate. Um, nothing worked. So this is by far the most reliable system that I could make. And um, it's, it feels a bit like cheating because of the hardware. I, I, it's the first time I, I ended up like I couldn't make anything work reliably without it. I think somebody, uh, it was that the question or is somebody's microphone uh, just on? Yeah, assistant for the second glove. Maybe. <laughs> I, I need an assistant. Yeah. I can imagine going into this big concert hall and then putting on these gloves. <laughs> Assistant, please come and uh, throw this in front of the webcam. Tape, uh... Yeah, shadow is something. Shadow is something that I consider it to be pissing off, uh, but it's actually could be used. Yeah, why not? So you mean that I would have the light here somehow or yeah and that then shadows would form in front of my fingers that could be something i i think yeah good good idea <laughs> uh why not it's it's not crazy if it works so shadow again has the property of the speed of light but uh, of course there could be problems when you consider that my hand bends like this and that the light needs to be somehow in line with my fingers, I, I don't know, it could be somehow difficult. But uh, if you don't try, you don't know if you get it to work. I think you comment maybe below the wrist. Maybe even better, yeah, below the wrist. So then light would come from here and yeah, it would form really long, uh, long vertical shadows like that. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I don't have a flashlight. Um, let's try. I have my my phone. Um... I can't even put my headset on with this other hand now. I do have my phone which has a flashlight. Uh, by the way, what screen am I sharing it on? Yeah, okay, good. Uh, Um, okay, I think I, yeah, okay, so even without the glove, this would look similar, a bit problematic, but uh, not as much as you would think, because even though you see these kind of shadows going uh, very much in that I mean, going in somehow different angles because of the one point light source here, uh, basically here under under my hand. Um, you can calculate that with math. So edge detection, some of you have done ed edge detection in the exercises. You could figure that out. Yeah, of course, false positives could still happen sometimes. Uh, like if your fingers somehow produce this kind of See here, uh, all the shadows that are grouping together. You don't really know what is what is happening anymore. But uh, maybe some machine learning system could learn that this would mean that all of them are are touching. And then, if one of the fingers, like the middle one, is not here, then this shadow should actually 
yeah, it should disappear. I think uh, the light doesn't need to be on the wrist. It needs to be on the table. Um, on the table somehow making making this. And then, yeah, then the shadow disappears like uh, like instantly when you release it. Try it out. I'm probably not gonna uh, try it. I do like that I get this uh, precise uh, precise reveal of the color here when I'm pressing it. So it does really work um, for me at least and uh, it doesn't cause any false positives. So I'm worried a little bit what happens when your shadows are, are merging like this. Can you really detect properly? Uh, things like that. So let me try a little bit of playing. So you can kind of see where I was going with that. So I had this kind of pattern that I was playing and it was really doing what, oops, this false positive coming when I'm doing this. So it's not perfect either, but uh, normally when playing your hand is never like this. So I consider it uh, an okay thing. So basically um, you can try. I think that this light solution is a great idea, like really inventive idea. and. Uh, I honestly, this is the first time I, I think about it and I only think about it because you told it. <laughs> so I, I couldn't have thought about this uh, idea by myself. And I did think a lot <laughs> in this uh, in this project because I, I wanted to get something that actually actually works. Yeah, any more uh, idea? Okay, take it. Another camera at the table label to detect fingers hitting the table. Huh. Yeah. Uh, problem would be that. Okay, so maybe from the front. Yeah. Yeah. So another camera sensor. You don't need to see that one. So um, so only to detect if you are touching the table or not. Basically something like this um, and only to kind of sense that yes, these fingers are indeed touching. Yeah, you need more sensors though. So idea uh, in my case was that you can do it with a single webcam or you could actually even do it with your phone. So um, you could try to um, test this application on your phone by, let me see, um, is my webcam still on? Yeah, just by doing something like this. So maybe putting your phone on some kind of stand here and then moving the, uh, the hand in front of the phone, basically in front of the camera, but then on the screen of the phone, you will see the, the buttons and, and things like that. And uh, you could even use the flashlight uh, of the phone if your lighting is inconsistent. So, of course, this is because I don't have a VR headset or, or something that I could integrate this even better. But uh, basically, um, I would like to get this with as little um, extra technical things as possible. So this glove is definitely a minus. Um, another sensor would definitely be a minus, but this is much cheaper than buying another uh, another camera. But definitely uh, you could make this system really reliable if you spend a lot of money into it. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you buy a table that is this kind of uh, touch screen table and you have the piano there. It's definitely going to work. You have piano apps on your phone. You can play with those. Um, but it's just not the same. So uh, I think that piano is really, really big. It's a big thing there. And we have not addressed many things like how to add all the keys. And is it possible to somehow pan the screen or uh, 
or can I actually lift this camera up really high and uh, allow me to use the entire table? Would it still work then? So there are limitations to having fixed screen size and uh, smaller devices as, as well. But these ideas are really great. So um, yeah, okay, so sometimes the screen freezes. Sorry about that. Oh, wow, many things. <laughs> yeah, Iron Man should be. I should have assistant like that. Was it Jarvis or how is it? What was it called? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, th I really think the light idea was, was great. And another camera idea is also good. So I think that you will get a reliable system. I also considered microphone, but I forgot to put it there in the systems, in the slides. So basically microphone touching the table so that you sense with the microphone the noise uh, of hitting the table. It doesn't need to be very strong noise, but uh, yeah, that could potentially work. You don't know if two fingers are touching at the same time. You don't necessarily know that information, but uh, it may be possible to find out. Maybe two fingers sound louder than a single finger. Again, uh, all these kind of ideas can potentially remove the need for the gloves. Uh, it adds another need and I think it could make it less reliable. So, so far I can really say that using this thing, uh, I can play the notes that I want and it won't glitch or, or have false positives. So, so far it's a reliable system. I don't know if these gloves will still work tomorrow because maybe this springiness goes, goes away. I need to make new ones or, or something. But uh, what somebody was talking earlier that if you make them from really high quality material or or if you really design them for this purpose and maybe 3d print some things on it or, or whatever make some smarter system uh, i think this could be even even better um i am sad that i don't have a full software solution though oh when you press the table with your fingers, the blood is moving. Yeah, some some spectral cameras might be able to pick that up, or infrared. Um, okay, two things come to mind. You, you know that uh, it's possible to see in the night by detecting the heat, basically. Uh, so it could be that when you're pressing the table, then... Uh, maybe blood actually leaves from the fingertips and they are colder. I don't think that this will happen. At least it will not happen in the fraction of a second that you maybe touch a key when you're moving it quickly. Uh, but now that I think about it, your finger may become a little uh, fatter when you're pressing because of the skin that is being squished. Again, you would need really good camera and many pixels, and it may not work in real time. So additional hardware requirements. Mm. Anyway, they are all really great ideas. I'm, I'm surprised some of these things coming up now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really think that could work, this, this heat detection. Uh, the problem is just that you probably need to press for a very, very long time to detect any change there. So I don't think that if you put a thermometer to your finger, I don't think that the temperature will change instantly or maybe even at all, unless you maybe cut off blood circulation or, or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that all of these are really potentially very good ideas. 
Okay, any more things to to talk about? Now, also note here that this um, this screen that I have. So yeah, so going back to the application now after the sun moved a little bit more, this is starting to show false positives um, in the heat uh, detection for the hover state. So this is just normal because previously this was the background that was recorded and now things are different. Um, this is not going to be the case when, uh, if you don't do this in sunlight <laughs> and uh, have to worry about changing, uh, changing conditions. I actually have here um, this camera here has the light on from my table lamp. Let me see if I can trigger this, uh, if I can show you this again. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so I do have this light on. If I turn off this light, well, you notice immediately that everything is dark here. <laughs> uh, that's one one thing. Uh, now, if I click the background again, things reactivate. So this is now the new new background. My hand is is detected there, but these blue. Things do not light up here. Basically, now my color key is way off, way different. Um, I could reselect the color key from here, but now in the poor light conditions, there are a lot of false positives coming here. So I basically broke the system. Um, sorry, broke the system because of bad lighting conditions, um, and. When I put the light back on, okay. When I put the light back on, um, system is still affected by the lighting conditions outside because it's just so bright outside today. So you should do this with dark curtains or something if you really want it to work properly. But as you saw, it kind of works. So um, when when uh, I tried using the system. So it is relatively uh, supporting these, these different situations that can happen. And if I would add here uh, thresholds for, um, for this color key and whatever, then maybe user could change those if it doesn't work in his lighting lighting conditions. Okay, uh, any more questions about this? I would like to still go through the code at least 10 minutes or so, so we do have time. But uh, well, uh, one comment about ergonomy. Yeah. If you're gonna, going to be a professional piano player and you're going to have to spend hours and hours with this <laughs> and you'll, you can keep your head up. Um, I'm working my, um, I was working at the university hospital at the operating theater and they got there in the theater this extra camera which they can put on top of the patient and they can use extra scre screen where they can see their hands and what they're doing. <clears throat> um, I don't know exactly what extra AR systems they can add there but at least they had uh, uh, they enhance the 3D system there, so they can uh, see in the screen the depth of the picture better. Mm -hmm. And and they can keep the head up. It's quite demanding for the surgeons. Yeah, that is true. So maybe maybe using the system like this, so that I maybe I use this lamp to hold my phone here in front, and then I'm using my phone screen um, to view my hands with the piano and then I just move in front of this screen here. Um, this is going to do many good things. Um, 
because I still see my hands in the in the correct location, but I see also the piano keys in front of uh, in front of them. Um, problem is just that this screen is relatively small, and my hand will easily go out of the of the screen size here. So I'm still thinking about it, but uh, potentially something like this would solve or if you make a bit smarter system and you have that kind of headset that you can uh, make uh, augmented reality look even better than this thing that we have made then uh, yeah so ergonomy is a good point i actually am quite tired now from sitting in this, <laughs> in this position here and um, i miss my table but i'm gonna be here for today <laughs> Let's get to the code then. Yeah, okay. Let's ask one more time if, if somebody has anything to comment about the, the application. And um, and yeah, uh, one small thing that could still talk about it is that um, I could still consider the system from yesterday. So it's not totally bad um, that you would play like this. Uh, by touching and then you don't need the gloves anymore so of course this is not the same at all um, as as with the gloves from the users from the user's point of view but uh, this is a way to play this kind of virtual piano uh, without any hardware solution so basically what we did Exactly, exactly what we did yesterday. Okay, so, and see, I clicked now on this background again. The light changed entirely because the sun is now in the clouds. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, definitely needs some kind of controlled environment, and I could have done better than this, but, uh, yeah many things you you can learn about that okay so let's go to the code and if somebody has more questions then we can just uh, ask anytime um yeah let me make my camera somehow smaller again and maybe get it out of the way here and I will just talk about how the code works. Let's see. Yeah, now I see it better. And um, I will not type anymore today. Okay. Mm, so let me try to remember all the changes from yesterday. I basically created more piano keys so yesterday we had just this one key that we used for testing but uh, we already did this uh, in lecture five i pretty much copied it from there but i made the keys a bit bigger so they are a bit longer now um, they needed to be longer because um, if i want to press also with my uh, thumb uh, my thumb is relatively low and uh, all these fingers here on the top uh, would fit on the keys but this one would not fit on the keys so i needed them to be longer again one thing that i i had to figure out <laughs> um, that needs to be done so yeah just creating more with different frequencies nothing nothing special there uh, then I actually disabled the event listeners and now I can uh, where you can press the buttons by clicking on the canvas. I did this because now we have this color key uh, selection happening. So basically um, here I can change now the color key by pressing a color on the left so this is overwriting my button presses on the on the left now this functionality so i can't play anymore the piano by clicking the notes 
it's something I don't like. Maybe I'm gonna make this so that you press the color here and then you have to select from there, otherwise you can play the piano. But uh, at the moment I had to disable these event listeners, so now it can only be played with the gloves. Right. Um, yeah, and I added these other event listeners for the mouse down so like that... that. Uh, yeah. Can't sorry. See code. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so these event listeners were removed, and the this one was added, and you should remember this one from lecture seven and eight. We just update the color key with whatever was pressed on uh, on the canvas. So, yeah. Okay. Then here in the draw scene, this is where more things are are happening now, um, especially here. So this was not done yesterday. We are getting the locations of pixels with the color key. So these uh, locations are the locations of the pixels that are revealed when I'm pressing with the gloss, with the, where the color is revealed from underneath this. Uh, this white masking material and uh, I am drawing these also uh, on the canvas here so you can kind of see now that this uh, uh, red pixels are appearing here on the left um, these are the ones that are matching the color key oh sorry here you don't see it So here uh, on the left, when I am revealing pixels that are uh, matching the color key, I am showing them uh, also on the left to somehow somehow confirm to the user that yes, these are indeed uh, uh, recognized. And they are appearing as well on the right here, smaller on the hit test canvas. So this is not necessarily needed to highlight it there, but I think it's I think it's okay. Yeah, going back to the code. Um, right. So this is what this does. It just draws the uh, pixel locations from there. Um, yeah, and this is the most significant update. So the pixel hit testing doesn't have now just the difference, the pixels that are different from the background, but also these uh, locations that are coming from the colored, colored pixels. And uh, this change is implemented here in the pixel hit test. So yesterday we only used this, this difference. Uh, now we are using also these pixels with the color, which are going to trigger the down state. So very similar code here. I'm getting the color keys from, uh, from the hover state and the color keys now from the down state. So only difference is this, um, which pixels are we looking for? The differences or the ones with the given color. And uh, then um, here we check first for each button. Um, we set it not down and not uh, hovering. If we are hovering, so this was the same code as yesterday, but instead of putting it to down, I'm putting the hover state to true. Uh, and then here I have a secondary test that if it is the color that is uh, this blue color, this color key that is overlapping the hit test region, then um, only then put it to appear as down. And uh, if it was not down, then it's going to do the callback. So basically, um, 
this is the most significant change from yesterday to today. And uh, here I'm marking now the pixel locations. Uh, I actually parameterized this function back in main. Um, Sorry, I put the keyboard in the screen and something strange happened. I think that keyboard has some uh, blue reflecting light from it, so it made a lot of calls positive. <laughs> Sorry about that, it's still running there in the background. So this mark pixel locations, um, I'm just saying here uh, to make the pixels red when they are from this color key. Uh, pixels otherwise this is going to be zero here so they are going to be drawn in in black so uh, just marking that in the hit test uh, location and that's it really um, there may be a few smaller changes but they are just visual changes um, yeah like here for example i'm uh, i'm drawing a small rectangle on this background canvas to show what is the color of the color key so just making a small rectangle there and the text next to it telling you that this is the color key and that you click here to select a different color so a little bit um trying to teach the people how to use this system it's still not great here uh, this color key is uh, not readable very well if your background is so dark and you can see what change happened now when the sun went in the uh, went in the clouds so i need more light here now otherwise this doesn't look like it's going to work properly anymore even though this light is on the, the light on top so I do have other lamps, but uh, <laughs> I was now relying on the sun, even though causing uh, glitches there. So you can get this code. Uh, I will put it available after the lecture and you can check it out. Um, but I will also plan to refactor this, as I said previously, make the system more uh, more clean clean up the code a little bit it does have a lot of stuff in it now and even some things that are not really needed like this hit test canvas is there just to teach you how it works but uh, it doesn't need to be there and uh, i think many functions are also there because of the teaching aspect and uh, oh yeah uh, i forgot i re-added here the visualizer so i just copied it entirely from uh, lecture five i just copied this and uh, small modification i i made it draw a thicker line two pixels uh, wide line with white background white uh, white stroke and then on top of it the same line again with red uh, red color but thinner so that's why this um, line here in the visualizer uh, looks a little weird like there is a white background and uh, then a small red red line in the middle this is so that you can see it on any any background so it's kind of like adding a shadow but i didn't didn't add a shadow there a, a glow a white glow to to the line um yeah and of course i added the visualizer because i think it's it's cool to have it there not uh not uh no other reason really yeah so any questions about the code i didn't insist on it too much today so if you followed yesterday and were 
able to uh, understand that, then what I showed today should be relatively straightforward. Uh, oh yeah, one thing that somebody pointed out yesterday, I forgot who it was. Um, I was using by mistake yesterday the um, another button handler code that I had uh, made off camera when I was preparing for the course. And uh, it's a little bit different, but very little. So I think that you can follow without without problems really. Mm -hmm. If you have seen the lecture about the button button handler system and uh, you understand how it works, then that's it's not a problem, I, I think. But yeah, sorry about that. You did notice that some uh, method names were different there and that's my fault. So I have to, I had to be more careful, but I was, uh, I, I forgot which one did I teach in the course and uh, yeah, but uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah, so that was it. Um, any more questions? Last time to ask questions in the lectures. Yeah, Radu, we have a question again. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's about more the project, but uh, you talked about it uh, today. But uh, if you want to make a score, uh, how can you like um, register the old scores and keep it? Because we only make four and we have not. Uh, and it, I find it very difficult like to save. Wait, I don't understand. Do you mean that you want to like, imagine? Like you make a score and you want to like save it so that like, when you come back to the page, it yeah, remembers yeah. your your score. It is possible. Yeah. Well, um, browsers nowadays have local storage. Uh, you could research how how to use local storage. Um, before that, I think people were using cookies by default. So using cookies to store a value for something, and then if you come back to the same page, just load it from that from that cookie. Uh, of course, you can also have a backend system with the database and, and whatever session variables, but uh, front end wise, uh, you can keep information like that. Mm. And of course, if the person uh, clears cookies from the browser, then it wouldn't work anymore. And I think the local storage is also, you can remove it somehow. But for instance, if there is like several people who are playing the same game, you can't see the uh, score? Uh, no, well, you, you need a database and a server where to host these, these scores. So now you hear some things about serverless technology, but it, it's not serverless technology. It's still some kind of cloud system that... that uh, Holds this, but so basically, you need you need some kind of database and some way for one person to update the database and another person to read to read from the database, um, or transfer somehow the data. Sockets are also possible. I never worked with web sockets. Um, so in multiplayer games, uh, sockets are usually a way to transmit data. Uh, faster than using HTTP requests. So sockets can transmit data from one client to another client and then get feedback immediately when the data was received. Uh, with web requests, you basically make a request, then wait for the response, make a request, wait for the response, um, make many of these requests just to see if something was updated into the into the database. So sockets could be used for multiplayer scenarios like that. But for storing scores, uh, if you want to, 
stores scores from multiple people, you need a database. Um, and the server, there are some free hosts online. Um, I remember uh, students in the past doing something like this, not in my VVD course, but in LAMAD course, another one I was teaching. They were making location-based applications and I don't remember the name of these services, maybe Heroku or, or something like that. I, you need to double check it. But basically, there may be some services that allow you to have a very small database there uh, and do HTTP requests, uh, even if you don't own a physical server somewhere or a cloud, cloud system. Um, but please, other students, uh, comment. I'm I'm not really good at these things, and uh, I am pretty sure that some of you here today know how to answer this question even better than me. Or not. <laughs> yeah, so... Th I think the easiest way to do this is, is cookies, but I'm not even sure that would work in code pens environment. Oh yeah. yeah. We need a the score we need our separate page, not in code pen. Yeah, good point. So okay. But I think that uh, Julian was asking about the um about the way to store the data so that other players also see the data so they wouldn't see the cookies of another computer. Uh, but what you are saying is also true. I think that you may not be able to access the code pen cookies. Uh, but code pen is irrelevant. I only ask you to use that because I find it easy to uh, check the code and the project at the same time, and, uh, fork it, and then make updates. Often you're sending me questions like, okay, this is buggy. How do we fix it? Uh, very easy for me to get it working in my environment and then make the update and send you the link. I, yeah. And you don't need to have your own your own server. So last time I taught the course, uh, students were uploading to CS server to the server at the university. And um, I made some kind of system where you could upload the zip file and then see the results. It was okay, but uh, not ideal, let's say. So, in in practice, you don't need to worry about code pen when making an application. Uh, and even for this course, you can use GitHub or, or something else. Even send me a zip file. But yeah, does any student have experience with uh, with um, using some of these free servers, free virtual, in I guess it's virtual servers or, or something. Like has anybody needed to store data somewhere and uh, used some, some online solution for it instead of investing in their own server? Mm, yeah, we can use like uh, Firebase. It's free for some like uh, hundred users or something. Like if they if they exceed, suddenly they will charge. Okay. But it's a cloud server. It's totally free for developers. It's easy. Okay. Yeah, and also in the chat, mm, I have also used Amazon services. Uh, for starters, they use uh, it's a one dollar authentication, and uh, it's technically free. Mm -hmm. if you limit yourself mm -hmm. okay and i see in the chat Ato also mentions this heroku so i was kind of right uh, about this uh, so yeah i mean you don't need to do this for this course i never thought anything like this like uh, any back end uh, stuff but uh, if you really want to have scores in your in your system then you can do that uh, and you can try this Heroku. I 
I'm basically using the server that we have at the university where I have access and I have my own databases um, when I'm making some, some things with scores. But uh, you don't have access to that by default and you only get it if you are doing some kind of project or like master thesis or something and you really need access to it. So it's, yeah check the the online uh, variants they do allow some free free small uh, small sized okay i think that's it for today any last minute things or is this it yeah okay so i think that this was a course basically and now I still have to check your exercises and the final exam next week. But thanks for watching and I, I hope you liked it. Thank you very much. That's a good Thank course. You. Yeah. Bye. Okay. Thank you. It was a nice one. Yeah, sure.